Hey, what's up, everybody? Mike Lindsley back with you. It's a Fish Friday here at Rosie's Corner. Stop by for the lunch or the dinner version, of course, sandwich and entree. This place is amazing, man. They got the French fries, the coleslaw, and the mac and cheese on the side, and, of course, your pizza wing combinations all day long as well. Rosie's Corner, a proud ML Sports Platter sponsor. How about it? Syracuse and Florida State, ACC Network, 8 p.m. tomorrow night at the JMA Wireless Dome. I'm going to be a tired fella tomorrow uh, after working this one for ESPN Stats. But seriously, can't wait for this game. Uh, these two programs actually hold kind of special meaning for me. Uh, Syracuse obviously grew up in central New York, covered Syracuse forever uh, since I've gotten out of college. Uh, and then you have on the other side, Florida State. My sister went to Florida State for grad school. I got part of her uh, a PhD there. I used to go down there every single fall for a game. I remember an unbelievable contest between Florida and Florida State. ABC, Saturday nights, packed place. We went to the pep rallies and all that. Florida State is an incredible university and Tallahassee is a terrific city. So uh, both Programs kind of hold their own uh, weight with me. As far as this matchup goes tomorrow, I think this is going to be a game where uh, the team that turns it over less, runs the football better, and, uh, and, and whatever quarterback plays better is going to win the game. Now, that all leans towards Florida State because... FSU's offense right now is humming. They're playing with a lot of confidence. They've got Trey Benson running the football really, really well, which then sets up Jordan Travis, the quarterback, who's been great this year, you know, in a hybrid role. He can kind of get out of the pocket, short intermit, uh, intermittent throws and all the rest, get him out of the pocket, throwing it over to uh, Wilson, Wilson, and Pittman, of course, the receivers, get those guys acclimated and involved. And as we know, Florida State has an immediate advantage over Syracuse. They're Florida State, so there's closer to four- and five-star guys and four- and five-star guys, and in the trenches, they're bigger up front, offensive line and defensive line. Now, one thing these two teams have in common, they are dreadful against the run. So maybe, maybe, maybe Syracuse can counter Florida State, keep the ball out of their offensive, uh, offense's hands with Sean Tucker. He ran for over 100 last year against the Knowles. They've got to have a Sean Tucker game here moving forward. The Syracuse Orange, things are falling apart for them. It's another November swoon under Dino Babers. I'm not surprised. That's why I told people it's 6-0. and It's exciting, you know. but let's just hold on here. And ever since they lost to Clemson, they had a double-digit lead. They had tons of turnovers against Clemson. They only converted one of those. And you got to win that game. You knock out their starting quarterback. You have got to win that game at Clemson. I'm a believer that if they win at Clemson, Syracuse maybe only has one loss or no losses right now. That's just kind of what a psyche type of thing does to you when you lose a game like that. Very rarely do you get that many turnovers on the road, knock out the quarterback, double-digit lead, Clemson. You know, a team that won almost 40 games in a row at home. You know, Syracuse since then has just been – dwindling and swooning down. Uh, 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 Garrett Schrader's been injured. They've had Garrett Williams, their, their, their number one corner, is out for the year with an ACL. Injuries are all over the place. Injuries are a part of the game. But Syracuse has got to figure out a way in these last three games to win two or three. I mean, could you imagine going six and six and losing uh, out here? Um, even one of three, I mean, it would still be kind of an ugly finish, but you'd be seven and five. They can't finish 500. Th 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 that would be a disaster. It would be the most epic collapse, I think, under Dino Babers, and that's really saying something. I think Florida State's going to be too much to handle in this game. I'm going to go 30 to 17 Florida State. I think their offense and their confidence right now is humming. It is a senior night, of course. The last time that we'll see the seniors in an orange uniform, we need big performance performances, of course, uh, from a Syracuse fan perspective on the offensive and defensive side from the likes of Sean Tucker, from the likes on defense of a Caleb Okachuku, who's been really good. Michael Jones, man, this is a game for you right here, okay? Final home game. Let's see what you have to offer. Maybe make a huge play and all the rest. Again, turnovers, running game, uh, red zone offense, those will all be keys for Syracuse and Florida State in a game that I think the Knowles come up and win. 30 to 17. Mike Lindsley with you here. It's an ML Sports Take from Rosie's Corner. Pizza, wings, stuffed shells, classic burger, fish Friday today. We loop around for the comfort foods next week. Meatloaf Monday, turkey slop Tuesday, chicken and biscuit Wednesday, and mac and cheese both Thursday and on Friday, and your fish every Friday as well. This place is amazing. Hey, make sure you try the meatball bomber, the garlic uh, parm wings, and the gold fever wings. They've got your salads, your snacks, your drinks, and your desserts right with your meal. Great place. Rosie's Corner, Route 11 in front of the Brewerton Bridge. And uh, I'll tell you what, gift cards are available for any and all occasions as well this holiday season. As I always tell you, enjoy the games.